guess who's excited about going for a walk? You want, what do you want to do? You want to go for walkies? You want to go outside? Want to go for a walk? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Oh my goodness. I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. Okay, Loki's really excited about going for a walk. So, let's see what how, how this goes today. Let's see how this goes. All right. Yeah. Beautiful day. Turn this camera around. All right. Well, welcome to the video. And here's Truly and Loki. Going to go for a walk. He loves walks. You smell dogs already? You smell like babies? You can look at people. Let me just stop here. Come on. We'll pick that up when we get back. More unboxings. All right, let's see if the trash got picked up. Nope. What the hell is going on? I've got to test this microphone out. So I've got the dead cats on it. Nope. The wind sock. The wind. Whatever these things are called. All I know is they're called dead cats. So let's see. It's that dual microphone by Deity. This was kind of a wasted walk because I was going to talk about the next episode from Teens in Tehran. I may dub over part of this and put that, include that in here. Break this up a bit. Oh, it may be silent and then I can dub in some extra stuff. Which is, what are we going to talk about today? Oh, is this the day we'll talk about the bazaar? as well. That's all I can think of right now. So, during that summer after we arrived, I think uh, that was episode, whatever last episode was, six? I'm not even sure. We had uh, just arrived in uh, Tehran and caught our ride to the, uh, from the airport to the hotel. And then I went back, tracked, and did some what we did in language and culture preparation. What little uh, there was of the culture preparation. Well, that's what led up to what this story, actually. The culture preparation, or lack thereof, is more accurately, is why we had trouble at the bazaar. I don't know, it was summer. It was probably just a few days later. I think we were only in country for probably a week. And our sponsor friends... Um, along with Denise, my uh, middle sister, my sister one year younger than me, and my little sister Anita, who was very young, she was maybe uh, seven, seven or eight by the time we went to the bazaar, because we had only been in country, like I said, less than a week probably. But we went to the, the uh, Grand Bazaar, I guess you'd call it. It's huge. They have everything. And it was amazing. 
and we walked all around inside. I think it's like 10 kilometers deep or something. I don't know how long it is, but it's huge. And uh, it's packed, packed with Iranian men and women. The merchants are, so many merchants, as far as the eye can see, the door, the left and right, they were to the left and to the right, and just hundreds, hundreds of merchants selling everything from uh, brassware to uh, artistic type of stuff, carvings, crafts. Um, there was food, places to get groceries probably, um, vegetables, fruits, uh, uh, cloth, different types of, of fabrics, Persian carpets, you name it. It was there. So uh, anyhow, my mom, she had no idea how to dress. And she was dressed like she would be in the States in 1971, which is showing a lot of skin. We'll just put it that way, but uh, we started drawing a crowd almost instantly of the Iranian men and a pensioner and trying to get up close and being more and more surrounded. And finally, we were just completely surrounded and noisy and people yelling and chanting and making who knows what they were saying I don't know I didn't understand back then and uh, it was wild it was suddenly becoming like a feeding frenzy and we were just wall to wall and uh, not giving us any room to move and they were trying to get at my mom and uh, I don't know I saw it coming or something because I ducked <laughs> and she came around with a swing and knocked one guy crap, 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 practically across the entire room. But the thing is, is it, it was just, it was crazy. We were really afraid by then. The, uh, the men were just like nuts. They were just going crazy because we weren't, we had no idea. We had no idea what we were going into. Islamic culture, um, very conservative. Most women, well, the older crowd, the more traditional crowd, were covered in chidora, which is a full body covering, head to toe. Modern um, uh, uh, Iranian women would sometimes wear a headscarf, but uh, that's all. Uh, that's uh, otherwise they didn't. But the uh, everybody else, they were covered. And uh, mom, she was dressed like a 71, a young 71, 1971's woman. And uh, it was, uh, we got to a point where we were pretty terrified. I know my mom was scared to death. And all of a sudden, uh, guys came out of the crowd in, brought her a, a covering, a basically a black cape, a Shadora, type of Shadora. It's actually not the full Shadora, it was just a cape to cover her head and her shoulders and body, all the way down to her feet. And several men rushed us into a uh, one of the markets, one of the local shopkeepers, and uh, closed the doors. And I guess uh, more people came and our driver came. And uh, the, absolutely, these were Savok, absolutely. Because they're the only ones who could have cleared a path for us to get us out of that bazaar alive. And uh, so we rushed out, got in the car, and uh, drove off. And that was our first experience with Islam, with the bazaar, with the, uh, the way Iranian men do things. And that's, you know, it wasn't their fault, it was our fault. That we were ill-prepared. We weren't prepared at all. And uh, we basically violated uh, moral codes, their moral codes and ethics, or moral codes anyway. And if we had been more prepared, we would have never done that. But uh, that's, uh, that's what happened, and it damn near got us killed. <laughs>